Mike Cahill, uh, you directed the first two episodes of the new show, The Path. What about this show appealed to you and made you want to do these first two episodes? Well, uh, when I first read the script, first of all, thanks for having me on the program. This is awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. <laughs> when, uh, when I first uh, read the script, you know, the, the, the opening pages are insane. It's a, you know, it, takes the, it says like, you know, here we are a few minutes after a tornado um, has wiped out this uh, small uh, trailer park. It's like God stepped his fucking foot on the place. It's like there, there was like an energy to the writing that was so... Uh, provocative and powerful and made me lean in right away. And then it was like a page turner. And um, the th thing about Jess's writing that, that was so compelling, it was, it was really well observed humans, you know, like it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't like writing fake humans. It was really all these unbelievable nuances about humans revolving around the question of why believe in something. And mm -hmm. that for me, like the, the like I, I'm drawn to, questions of spirituality science and spirituality logic and spirituality and here was this story that somehow from all these different angles brought together people uh who believed for different reasons what they believed in didn't even matter it was why they believed and uh and so i thought i had something perhaps i could bring to it and i felt uh i i you know met with jason kadem who's brilliant and 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 jess and michelle lee and and sort of begged them to to let me do this part because I, I i just love the writing mm -hmm. what's so fascinating about that first episode is that there's this sense of uh mystery surrounding the organization that these people belong to you know you, you're giving like little hints about what it is uh right. sort of gradually you know and um so as a director how do you do that? How do you uh, sure. achieve sense of mystery? Well, you know, they're, they're, the idea, a cult, it's obviously a cult, right? And cult mm -hmm. has a hugely negative connotation in society at large. It's, it, 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 it makes people think of Kool-Aid and brainwashing. And, and yet to do this, I, I really wanted to you had to parse out the information slowly. You couldn't get into the nitty gritty of what they believed and the, the different rungs of the ladder. And, mm -hmm. and, and in, instead, I, I wanted to portray it warm. So we used warmer colors. We create this idyllic place, the compound. We found this beautiful compound in upstate New York and, you know, with organic gardens and beautiful like um, bungalows that everybody stays in and then show the, it, don't show the religious aspects yet, but show the outreach to community first. So what we do is we try and forge a connection to make the audience, to make the viewer say, wow, I, I, these people are doing great things. This is great. Like, like, to see the good first. And then not only are they doing great things, but then just visually, aesthetically, you get this, it's warm and it's inviting. It's not cold and sterile. It's very much alive. People are, uh, you know, there's community and, and th there's all these little dials you can control through, music, composition, sound editing, you know, um, um, and color, and uh, to, to make it seem like it's a, it's a positive thing. And then slowly as you, and then the, the, the more obscure or alienating features of the cult uh, reveal themselves piece by piece as the series goes on. We, we obviously get pretty complicated right in episode one with some of the, some of the intense stuff that Cal does in particular, but, um, but, but really it was about the, the idea was set it up as something that we don't judge that, or that we judge positively, that we want to be a part of. It feels like, you know, uh, like, a, like an advertisement for some organic farms, like beautiful mm -hmm. lifestyle, like, right? And yeah. then, okay, wait a second. They actually believe that this, you know, glowing ladder came down and their leader ascended this ladder and saw a vision of the future of chaos and all these things that are sort of, you know, a bit mm -hmm. like a bit distancing when you when you when you get into it. But that's that's sort of the mechanism of, of joining a faith, I guess. Yeah, you see these little uh, parallels. Uh, I'm kind of fascinated by this stuff myself. So, you know, you see these little parallels to like Scientology and Jim Jones and right. uh, Warren Jeffs, you know. Uh, right. So did you do any kind of research into uh, those kinds of death cults or things like that? Well, I, you know, not 
it, it was interesting, sort of separately, and this is probably why I was attracted to the to the writing in the first place. But when I was in college, I went to Georgetown, and I remember when I was in college, it was like the beginning of the internet. I remember like freshman <laughs> year we didn't really have internet, and then sophomore year we did have internet. What is mm-hmm. this thing? And and I remember uh, using the internet to listen to Jim Jones's conversations. Like you could hear his speeches, and you could hear his voice, and one of the things that I found so, and, and so I would just listen to them to just to get, to try and understand the human psychology of like what went on in, in, in South America and um, in Jonestown. And you notice that the one thing that is so striking is the dude was charismatic as hell. Like mm-hmm. he had a voice that was like, could lift an audience and then he would punish an audience and then he would lift them up and then he would squash them. And there was this really strange, uh, like you realize that, a lot of movements revolve around a person and a, a charismatic person. And, uh, and and Cal Hugh becomes that. Like, here's a movement that's losing its figure, who presumably was very charismatic. Steve, the guy who uh, we discover at the end of the pilot, is is not in, not in very good shape and, and hasn't finished uh, uh, giving the lessons of the... The, the religion to the to the, to its people and and Cal sort of deciding to take over and he's trying to become that charismatic figure and he does do that and and so I I, I had those in mind or I, I I had done a lot of research just separately this because of my own fascination with the subject mm-hmm. yeah you really get a a sense of that uh, I think it's in the second episode where he's doing the TV interview. Uh, and uh, he's talking about all these great things that they do. And I love Hugh. He's so good. <laughs> he's such a good actor. He's such a good person, but he's such a fierce actor, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the television interview. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, when, what were you saying? Uh, no, I was just uh, uh, going to ask you, uh, jumping off of that, uh, you've got these three really great central characters in the show. Uh, Aaron Paul, Michelle Monaghan, and Hugh Dance. Uh, so I wonder if you could talk a bit about those working with those three actors and about their characters. Well, they're great. They're all they're three different sides of this. Um, mm-hmm. As actors, they're you know it's a phenomenal cast. I felt so fortunate to to show up every day and and just what like their craft is on a on a level that's unbelievable and. Um, and you see it because television, you shoot, like we were shooting, I shot episode one and two in a block schedule. Mm-hmm. So basically you're shooting things all over the map in terms of arcing. Cause like you'll arc in a, a character will arc in a, in a one show, but then there'll be a larger arc for the season or, you know, there's a, there's a lot of mathematics and crap that goes into constructing these characters. And what's amazing about Michelle and Hugh and Aaron is they're very they're very uh, capably in charge of all this. They can they can control. They they have a very strong uh, uh, internal map of emotional map. Um, and so you know their characters are very different. Eddie, played by Aaron, he's somebody who's doubting the faith. He's somebody who is doubting the faith through a vision that he had on an ayahuasca trip, which is like a really like already that's hard to manage, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, and you know and then uh, his wife Sarah she's she was raised in the religion so she's coming from the perspective of someone who's known this her whole uh, life and and then Cal is somebody who was adopted into it who had a rough family and then sort of rose faster than everybody else uh, through the ranks and and became this it became sort of the 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 next go to leader and you know take away the religion there's all this. Uh, political um, uh, power mongering movements and, and, and doubts that these three are triangulating. And, you know, it, it, it's amazing to see how they're very, very specifically different people. And, and you know, as a director, you you go in, you, you, you sort of, before um, shooting or before we, we meet, we talk about the character, we talk about the character arc and, and we talk about where we are and everybody has different needs and some people need less and some people need more, most of them needed less. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and really just making sure that those, it's like you're creating, they're creating these three dimensional pieces of a larger story. Right, mm-hmm. they're not colors on a palette that's going to paint a picture. They're not single colors. They're multi-dimensional characters, uh, and yet they have to. In many ways, they have different wants and desires, and so it's just sort of managing all that and 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 being a barometer for that truth to unfold and 
is is what I do, and it's it's beyond a, like a privilege and a pleasure. Like I feel like the luckiest human being, man. Mm -hmm. Well, what's so great about them, uh, and I think this is a tribute to the writing as well as the acting, is that you really do see their humanity. You know, like they're not uh, painted as just these kind of, like you said, they're three dimensional characters. You know, and I, I think. Especially with uh, Hugh's character, it'd be very easy to make him sort of this, uh, you know, David Miscavige like uh, super villain. Um, <laughs> but right, right, you really do understand where he's coming from uh, in a lot of scenes. Right, uh, right. You get. I mean, you get once you get a sense of his backstory, you're like, oh man. You, you realize his mother. You know, he's an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. uh, his mother's an alcoholic. Uh, uh, she's like burned down the house or she's like set the house on fire with him, you know. And what's amazing is he doesn't, you don't feel pity for the man. You feel, you just feel more understanding, empathy, which is a total different thing. And, and, and again, that's, that's not an easy thing to create, but that's why these actors are so, you know, they're such brilliant artists is because they can create empathy instead of pity. And, 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 and then all of a sudden you're like, you, you're almost rooting for him. Like, there's a scene in the pilot where Hugh, uh, Hugh's character, beats up Mary's dad, and and it's intercut with the with his sermon uh, mm -hmm. on uh, at the Saturday sort of uh, 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 chapel, and and he beats the shit out of this guy who's really kind of you know uh, a, a totally abused Mary when she was a child, and so. Mm -hmm. There's there, that aggression by Hugh is both justified and yet he's channeling these other emotions he had just from the scene previous. And it, it's, it's like very complicated human emotion to, 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 to tread on. And, and he does it, uh, and you, you're almost like cheering for him. It's almost sexy. Like there's something, mm -hmm. when, when, when Mary looks at Hugh and watches him beat the shit out of his dad, which is just complicated. Uh, scenario to find oneself in. Um, you can see that that this was a moment for her in her life, and and it's beautiful, and it's really beautiful, mm -hmm. in all of its disgustingness. Mm -hmm. um, so you shot these two episodes uh, back to back. Um, I uh, spoke with your DP, and I, he said you had something like eighteen days to shoot these two episodes. Um, now you've got a a, a background in. He's a, <laughs> your own is amazing. <laughs> DP, our DP is so good. Yeah. Uh, there's something funny. Like if I ever, I was like your own. You know, um, so for this scene, like I, I would really like if the the you know we could fit like four camera people into this tiny room and and, and get the light to still feel you know, uh, uh, you know, sort of sexy. And he'd be like, Mike, room. Nice, sexy lighting. That's my specialty. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and then if I was like, all right, so you're going, we want to do a, like a, a four minute um, uh, uh, steady cam shot that walks through the debris and lifts up, gets on a crane, flies over the debris and reveals, you know, the van's coming. And he's like, four minute steady cam shot rising up on a crane. That's my specialty. <laughs> 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 one, of, one of the most beautiful people to work with, I have to say. And so, so talented, so talented. And because that 50, the 18 day sort of schedule, which is fast as, you know, you're churning, you're like seven pages a day, mm -hmm. eight pages a day, sometimes nine pages a day. I feel like some of it's going so fast. Uh, so you have to prepare a great deal, but you also need a DP. Like, like a lot of that comes down to how fast it can be lit and how, how much cover, like how much coverage you can do um simultaneously like we we did a lot of cross coverage we did you know two cameras looking one direction two cameras looking the other direction and being able to light it so that it feels naturalistic and yet heightened uh sort of an epic verite but also you know efficient so managing that was also a big uh, a big effort that we put a lot of thought into mm -hmm. well you do have a background in doing feature films and independent features so how did that uh, help prepare you uh, for doing this tight TV schedule? Uh, well, you know, those features, they didn't, we didn't have a ton of time making those either because those mm -hmm. were very, you know, they were uh, another Earth and I origins. They were both um, 
films were low budget films. So all of a sudden doing this show, like even though we had a tight time constraint, um, that the, the financially there were, there was strong budgets, good budgets that we can do what we needed to do. We uh, uh, definitely way more than the, the movies had. So with a, with a great deal of planning, I mean, I guess, you know, we had eight or nine weeks of prep, mm -hmm. 10 weeks of prep, maybe even. Um, and so we, we just storyboarded the complex things. We really, really mapped out what we needed to do. And then again, as I said, the like cross coverage is, is something that's great both for efficiency, like shooting multiple cameras simultaneously is great for efficiency, but what it's also great, it's great for acting because um, the yeah. actors can, can play off each other very naturalistically. They can fight, like if there's some, a way in which um, in episode two, for example, it, it, there's this wonderful scene between Sarah, Hugh and Peter who plays Sarah's dad. Um, and uh, the whole thing is ripe with subtext. The subtext is really what's commanding this scene. And everybody's reading each other. Like, everybody's saying one thing, but they're reading something much deeper underneath. And they're picking up on it gesturally in their cues, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and when you're shooting in a manner where you're capturing all that, you, can, you don't have to manufacture anything in the edit. You can actually... Um, harness these real performances that are real reactions that are that are operating on a level that's like super nuanced mm -hmm. um so you're not just sort of like blunt force cut, cutting one take take two with take seven you're actually you pick a take that feels the most organic and natural and, and right with strong subtext and has a tight reversal or all, all those things that makes the scene work really well you pick the take and then all of a sudden you have the coverage you just use all the cameras from that take which is amazing, and so just knowing how to do that, like we had, we did that in uh, in both another Earth and I Origins, we did uh, cross coverage. So it's something I was really fond of, and it's something Jason Kadams did in Friday Night Lights, um, uh, and and that was a technique where um, uh, the, the they used that quite frequently, which was like to just shoot mo three cameras simultaneously at least. Mm -hmm. Is it an exciting time to be directing for television? Oh yes, it's such an exciting time. Oh my goodness, it's it's well, I, you know what? You can do a lot more nuanced stuff in TV these days. It's mm -hmm. sort of like what the the indie films of the '90s were capable of doing, or like the the topics that that independent films were would tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, those have somehow landed in the realm of television, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they, it almost is as if. You know, obviously, there's still Sundance and Sundance is and and discovering new voices and great, great filmmakers and great independent films. But the market of studios is really it's sort of uh, taking really big swings at universal content that can exist all over the world. And whereas television, there's you can you can really they can um, the financials could be sustained and you can still do work powerful, artistic, subtle, all those things that, that, are, that, that are, are chasing the sublime, you can do that in television these days, which is really exciting. Exciting for me. Um, and it's exciting to, to dip my toes into it and, and really get to experience it. Uh, and to do so with such incredibly talented people, you know, like I, I feel, re it's like, it's ridiculous uh, how blessed and fortunate I feel to be, to be in that crew of, uh, uh, of people. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, man, I, I, television's where it's at. I mean, movies are still where it's at, but, uh, but, but certainly there, there's something really special going on in TV, but you know, that's, that's known. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice that you can move back and forth between the two with, you know, kind of like relative ease these days. You know what I mean? Like there's like the types of stories that you can do and, visual techniques that you can employ like are the same kinds of things you can do in feature films a lot of the times right right exactly yeah you can do i mean you can be really you can you, the, the, from my point of view the budgets in television are great too you know <laughs> like you can do really creative stuff like i i'm obsessed with filmmaking in general i'm obsessed with the craft i'm obsessed with the gear mm -hmm. you know i'm a nerd about like uh the technique and 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 
uh, like I like to get my hands on all the stuff. So like experimentation with the form and trying to uh, trying to push the limits, trying to capture something visceral, like grab the spinal cord of viewer <laughs> to feel what's going on. It's like it's you know that makes me love this stuff so much. And and um, and and you really you know so when I was first uh, like considering TV or thinking about TV, someone said to me, he's like you know um, it's a friend of mine who's an AD. He's like you know uh, back in the day. Now we're in a time of television where television is amazing. But back in the day, television really, television directing was like uh, slap together enough shots that it makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Just get enough shots that the thing makes sense that they can, you know, play it for 30 minutes and, you know, eat their dinner and move on. But nowadays it's totally different. It's not slap together shots to make it make sense. It's really, it's a, it's an art. It's, it's an art form. And there's, there's a whole you know, huge audiences gathered around the craft and, and the art form and the art making of television these days. So, so that's really, really uh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much and congratulations on the show. It's really terrific and it was a real pleasure talking to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing this interview. I had a lot of fun. It was nice chatting with you. Nice chatting with you too. I had fun as well. Have a great day. All right. Take care. You too.